for the congregation of singing and the special music this morning. If you will open your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 1. We're going to read verses 3, 4, and 5 uh, this morning. Just want to pick up a couple of phrases out of 3 and 4. We're actually going to be spending our time in verse 5 uh, this morning. If you can comfortably stand, if not, feel free to remain seated. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3, 4, and 5. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue, by which has been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Take a moment, ask the Holy Spirit to uh, prepare your heart for his uh, word this morning. Heavenly Fathers, we bow in your presence. We come, Father, asking for the anointing of your Holy Spirit asking, Father, for the unity of your spirit that it might work throughout your people here this morning, asking you, Father, to reveal your divine word to us this morning in a way that we speak to each of us individually. And I pray, Father, for someone that don't know you this morning, that you might Show them your grace, your mercy. Lead them to a saving knowledge that they might accept you as their Lord and Savior before this service comes to an end. If there's someone that is not in a right relationship with you this morning, I pray for your Holy Spirit to bring them into that relationship that you would show them what is hindering that fellowship with you their heart and in their life. Pray that you would take your word this morning, that you would anoint this body, this lips of clay, this mind, that it would be under total submission to you, that it would speak nothing more than what you would want me to say, nothing less than what you would want me to say, and that your spirit would move freely that you would remove any obstacles that might hinder your Holy Spirit in this service today. In Jesus' precious holy name I pray. Amen. I just want to call your attention to a couple of words, really the word, but I'll, I'll use a phrase here in verse 3 and verse 4. You'll notice in verse 3 the word given. Uh, and I'm reading out of the uh, New King James. He said, as his divine power has given. So somebody, something has given. Uh, the word given, something has given us something here at this particular moment. And if you read above that, it is God is the one that is doing the given giving in verse 3. And he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In verse 4, you're going to find the word give or given again. And it said, by which has been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. So in verse 3, something has been given to us by God, and that is all things that pertain to life and godliness. In verse 4, something has been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. So we have been give something in verse 3, 
we have been give something in verse 4. And the word give just means that we have basically been handed a, a free gift. But I want us to notice that in verse 5, we find the word give again. But I want us to notice that there has been a, a character change. In verse 3 and 4, God has been the one that has been giving. But in verse 5, we find that he said, But also for this very reason, giving all diligent. Who is he talking about here? He is not saying that God needs to be giving all diligence. He is not saying that God is giving us all things that pertains to life and godliness. He is not saying that God has given us all great and precious promises. What is he saying? He's saying now the mood has changed. He's saying, I have given you everything that pertains to life and godliness, and I've given you great and exceeding great promises, and now it has shifted. There has become a responsibility that has fallen upon you of like faith that has received these things that I have given you in verse 3 and verse 4, and now it has shifted a responsibility upon us that I want you to give all diligence to what I'm about to talk to you about. See, God has give in verse 3, and God has give in verse 4, and now he's saying the responsibility has shifted to us. And I think that as we think about that, he said, I want you to give, but he added some words to that. And the first word that he said, I want you to give all, and that I want you to give diligence. And I'm not going to go into a big, lengthy definition of diligence because I did last week. But the word diligence, the first part of that word diligence means that there's a time frame and that it means that we need to show an urgency about the timing of it and we need to get on board right now about it. And the second part of it is an earnestness about it. We need to get earnest about it and we need to do it right now is what the, the word diligence means. So he's saying I need you to get earnest and I need you to get on board right now about it and give all diligence to what I'm about. And he's about to give us seven things that he wants us to give all diligence to. And when I look at this, the word add, according to some of the original Greek, the word add is not a real good word. It says that it should have been ministering. But whether it's add or whether it's ministering, it means that you're going to take a real good care of it, whether it's ministering or whether it's add to. If you want to use the word ministering, it means that you're going to care for it. You're going to take care of it. You're going to minister to it. You're going to, you're going to look after it in a very diligent way. So what did he say? I'm going to add to or I'm going to minister to my faith. I have received faith, and I want you to realize that this all comes through God. It's not something that I can just go out and say, I'm going to add to or I'm going to minister to my faith on my own. It don't happen that way. Because does the book of Ephesians, I believe it is, it says, By grace, through faith, are you saved, that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. So God gave you your faith, and God will increase your faith. But God is not going to just get up every day and say, I'm going to increase your faith just because you're a day older from the day that you got saved. These babies that are back here on the back seat with Richie and Shauna, they don't increase their strength just because they're a day older. Somebody has to minister to them. Somebody has to be add to them. They have to fix a bottle for them. They have to they have to give them the food that they need. They have to nourish them. They have to take care of them in order for them to grow every day. I guarantee you, ask 
the parents and the grandparents. They're time consuming, aren't they? How time consuming are we in our spiritual walk with God? Or do we just say, God, I got saved and I need you to grow me every day. I'm a day older, so pour a little more faith in. Or do we add to our faith virtue? And the word virtue, there's a lot of different definitions in the Greek. There's the moral excellence, there's energy, there's strength. But do we add to our strength every day? Do we get in the Word of God? Do we study the Word of God? Do we say, I want my energy poured into my faith and my walk with God? Amen. Amen. See, He has said, I give you. I gave you a gift because you accepted my son Jesus Christ. Because of that, I gave you all things that pertains to life and to godliness. And I gave you all these beautiful, precious, and exceeding, wonderful promises. Now, I'm asking you to give diligence and add to your faith virtue. Put some energy into it. Put some time into it. If these babies at six months old or a year old or two years old or five years old were still on the bottle, wouldn't you think there was something wrong with them? But we can be a Christian for 10 years and not know where John 3.16 is and think we're a normal Christian. So where's the book of John? Because we've never opened our Bible. We have no idea. We never look in the Word of God. We never treat the Word of God. We never try to understand what God is saying to us and grow. That's what he's saying when he said, add to your faith virtue, moral excellence, strength, energy. Grow in that way. These babies that they're holding back there, it is not going to be long till they're not going to be holding them. They're going to be chasing them, trying to keep up with them. But that's normal. In our spiritual walk of life, God should be seeing energy. He should see birth out of us. He should be seeing energy. He should be seeing growth out of us spiritually. Where Satan's knocking us around today, we should be able to stand and watch Satan bounce off of us a year from now because we've got rooted and grounded in the Word of God. Amen. Amen to that. He said, add, minister to your faith, virtue, energy, strength, moral excellence. Add to it. And then he goes on to say, add to virtue, knowledge. We do everything in this world today. I was in Richie's shop down there the other day. He's got an automotive shop. And I'd hate to ask him what that toolbox and all of those tools were worth. But if you don't keep up with the new technology, do you think he'd be able to work on the vehicles that comes through that door? Not at all. But we think that we can come to church, hear a sermon on Sunday morning, and we're good for the rest of the week. we get spiritually strong? How do we get to where Satan don't just beat us up every day, stomp us down, whip us down? It's by the knowledge of the Word of God and trusting in the Word of God. I believe it's in John. I know it's in John. It's either chapter 15, 16, 17. I believe it's in 17, but I'd have to go back and look. He said that we purify ourselves through the Word. 
You know how we get how we get to where we can stand against Satan? Get pure in the Word of God. Satan can't come in the blood of Jesus. He can't stand in the blood of Jesus. You know what Jesus whipped Satan off with when he came out of the wilderness there and when he stood there and when Satan began to tempt him? What did he whip him with? It wasn't a church attendance record that said, I sat through 732 sermons straight in a row and I didn't miss a sermon. He whipped him with the word of God. He said, Thus saith the word of God. This is what the word of God said. And Jesus even told his disciples, he said, if you'll just know the word of God, if you'll study this word, if you'll know this word, when you get out there, when Satan begins to battle you, he said, I'll bring it back to your remembrance so you can use it against him. God will do the same thing for us today if you'll study the word of God. But God can't go get something out of your memory bank that you hadn't read or studied. That's where knowledge comes from, from the Word. You say, well, I listen to all of these preachers and I hear all of these preachers and I hear all of this. That's not reading and studying the Word for the yourself. It's either in 1st or 2nd Timothy that Paul told Timothy, study the word of God. I'm paraphrasing. But he said, study to show thyself approved unto whom? God. You're proving yourself to God. You're not proving yourself to your wife. You're not proving yourself to the church. You're proving yourself to God. That's where the knowledge comes in. And then he goes on. To knowledge, self-control. I think that's a big area today, self-control. You say, I think I've got pretty good self-control. Well, maybe you're not a whoremonger. Maybe you're not a drunkard. Maybe you're not a drug addict. You think, well, i got self-control under control. I don't think he's talking about that. Because I really don't think when Peter was writing this book, I think Peter was talking about that we need to get all of these other things out of our life and really get down to what's important. And I think Peter learned some very valuable lessons in life. Peter thought that he had a walk with the Lord that it really Peter didn't have. And Peter, this was a toward the end of Peter's life when Peter was writing this book. But Peter was that man that said, everybody may deny you, Jesus, but I'll die with you. And Jesus said, Peter, before the cock crows, you'll deny me three times. Peter's out there with a little old girl, and she said, the third time, this is the third time he denied her, denied him. This little old maiden girl said, I think you were hanging out with Jesus, weren't you? Peter begins to curse. Man, I don't know. Peter knows what it is to, to think that you're somebody. And, to, to, and he was the one that when they came to get him in the garden, Peter's the one jerked the sword out. Peter didn't understand that the battle that Jesus had talked to him about all this time, it wasn't with a sword. Peter just didn't get it. Peter had been asleep all the time that Jesus had asked Peter, James, and John, pray with me for just a little while. He was sound asleep all during that time. But Peter knew that he needed self-control. He needed to be more focused on Jesus. Amen. I think what he was talking about when he said that we need is self-control. How many of us have let things just get out of control when it comes to our spiritual lives? Everything's taken part of our lives except for our spiritual lives. We don't have it under control. We're letting every 
everything filter in and everything take part of our lives and then when we sit down and we really think about how much control we have over our spiritual life, how much time we spend in the Word of God, how much time we spend down on our knees. I sat down this week and just, I, I guess it's because we're studying the end times. I don't know what it is. I sat down and just read back through the book of Acts. I said, man, why can't we have another book of Acts at Comfort Springs Baptist Church where souls can be saved? And I think it'd be like jumping off on one of those, I think they call it a bulldog in a bin in a rodeo where they jump off on one of those steers that's running wide open and get a hold of his horns. He just drags you across the arena. Go back and look at the book of Acts. They didn't come to church just on Sunday morning or Sunday morning and Sunday night. They were meeting every day. They were praying every day. They were doing the Lord's Supper every day. You say, well, that was a one-time event. Well, before that one time event, they were over there and Jesus said, pray till you can figure out who this one man is that we need to replace Judas that just killed himself. And they prayed till they prayed through. Now we got to have a committee that goes through resumes. We don't pray till we pray through. We got to have committees. The first, you look at the Acts chapter 3, where was Peter and John going when they did the miracle on the crippled man that's going to a prayer meeting? Look at them after they got whipped and beat. Where did they go? They went back and prayed. What did they pray for? For more boldness, just to preach the word of God. Where did the first deacons come from? Out of a group of prayer. Who do I need to pick to do this so that we can spend more time in prayer and study of the Word of God in Acts chapter 6. How did the Gentile race ever get invited in? Peter was up on the roof praying, and God said, Get down and go see Cornelius. But I guarantee you, you could invite the whole county of Faulkner County for a prayer meeting at Copper Springs Baptist Church, and you'd have plenty of seats still left. We're out of control. We don't have self-control when it comes to the things of God. Amen. Do we want self-control or do we want to go on? Self-control, perseverance means keep on keeping on. That's tough right now. That's tough right now. If you don't think it's tough, go witness to somebody. Try to tell them about Jesus. See what kind of answers you get. <laughs> Try to invite somebody back to church. See what kind of answers you get. See how difficult it is. He said perseverance, godliness. All of this comes through the grace of God. It ain't something that you can pick up as you start out the door and say, give me a pamphlet because I need these ingredients to take home with me. It comes through prayer. It comes through saying, I want it, and I want it back. I want to lose some weight. But eating Twinkies every night before I go to bed, I ain't losing it. don't expect to, to be honest with you. I can say I want to be godly. I want to persevere. I want self-control. I want to add to my faith virtue. I can say it with my lips. But God knows what my heart is.
He knows what my actions is through the day. He said, I give. I give you all there is for godliness, for you to live your daily life. I give you exceedingly great and precious promises. And now I'm asking you to give diligence. I'm asking you to give diligence to add to your faith virtue. To your virtue, I'm adding you to add knowledge, knowledge, self-control, self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, God. And then next week, we'll get into where it really gets sticky. Brotherly kindness. The kindness that Jesus had. Are you that kind to each other? We'll talk about that next week. Musicians, would you come?